Are you tired of building houses that end up looking like this? Well if so, I have a step by step tutorial on how you can use some simple tips and tricks to level up your house building skills. This video was made with the help of a professional builder, Disruptive Builds, but more about him later on. And without further ado, let's get into the first step, which is pretty important, choosing the location. Depending on the theme of your house, you might want to choose the mountains, or for example near some water, if you're going for a lakeside house vibe. Also take into consideration how big you want your house to be. Once your location is nicely picked out, we can start planning the house. Planning a house is pretty straightforward. Try to look for inspiration on Google or different Minecraft building subreddits. Try combining different ideas and come up with something unique. And once you have a design ready in your head, it's time to start building it. But stop right there, don't just rush to building the walls. Let's plan it out a bit. And one way I like to do it is with logs. Just place them in little sections like this, leaving 3 to 5 blocks in between, depending on how big you want your house to be. This rectangle looks a bit boring though, so let's add another square right here to make the shape a bit more interesting. If you don't like using logs, colored wool is also a great option to mark the outlines of your buildings. You can even use different colors to show the different shapes. And once you finish the shape and size, you can extend the pillars to make a skeleton of the house. This helps you visualize the size of the building way better. And now when that is done, we can start building the walls. But when doing that, don't use a single type of block, this is boring. Instead, use different blocks that have a similar tone to them. This adds a lot more texture and character to your house. Something like this for example. But let's make it look even better. Another method to do that is to insert them by one block. This will take up quite a lot of interior space, but it is best to use when building bigger houses. Adding different details like stairs, trapdoors, fences and signs can also help with making your walls more unique. For example, I added stairs with barrels next to each pillar, and between those, some leaves to make it look like the bushes. I also used quite a lot of wood and stairs and trapdoors to make those arches above the windows. This adds so much to the overall look in my opinion. On the second floor, I use fences and fence gates to connect the wooden pillars, just like this. The fences can also be used as sort of windows in some cases. So I did that exactly right here, where the stable will be. And as you can see, it fits pretty well. Adding small details, such as flower pots and lanterns, can also bring more life to your build. You might also see that there are some random holes in the walls. And those are not an accident. That's where the windows will be. But don't just use the regular glass blocks. Most of the time using glass panes is a much better option. It adds an another layer of depth to your build compared to the regular glass blocks that are just flat with the wall. Like come on, it's boring. And as you can see, the walls are already starting to look really cool. Here is also a quick trick when building the door. As you can see, there's a pretty big opening for a door, but let's use some spruce strap doors and place them around like this. And in the middle goes the door itself. Looks pretty cool, right? But we are also missing something else. So the next step we are going to talk about is the roof. There are many different ways you can make a roof, but please don't use the most common way of just building with stairs. Instead, there are many ways you can change the look of the roof. And first one is by using a bit more unusual and unique shapes and curves. For example, instead of using on the stairs, use some blocks and slabs to make the roof more curvy. And once you have the roof shape done, let's start filling it in with blocks. But stop! As I said before, don't just use one type of block. Instead, use different blocks that have similar colors. For example, with this house here, I'm going to use deep slate bricks and deep slate tiles for the roof material. And as you can see, they have a slight variation in color and gives it a very cool effect when used together. You might also notice that I use a completely different block to do the outline. And that is another tip, making a trim like this to your roof helps to bring out more variation and colors of your build. So I definitely recommend doing that. Okay, our roof is starting to look pretty good now, but it still looks kind empty. So to make it more interesting, let's also add a couple of dormer windows. These are the small extrusions that come out of the roof and have windows. I'm sure we have all seen them in real life. And now, as the cherry on top, let's also add a chimney. This will complete the roof and complement it pretty well. And that is what we ended up with. I am pretty happy, but we gotta move on. 
Looking around the house, it seems so empty. So let's fix that. Just using regular bat blocks in the front house is boring. So let's change it up a bit and use stone and the site and gravel to make the bat leading to your front door. You can even add pressure blades and buttons to act as little rocks and tiles on the road. And to change it up even more, let's do a road to the stable with bat blocks and core stirred like this. Since we are already here, let's also add some additional decorations to the stable. Something like this for example. I'm sure the horse that will live here in the future will like it. The outside of the build is pretty much done now. But we gotta work on the interior. And no, an interior is not just a bed and a couple of chests randomly placed. Let's put some actual thought into it. And when doing that, we pretty much have two options. We either can design the room to be open, bland and wide, or closed off with walls. So which either one you want to do is up to you. But we have two floors, so I can show you both ways. The bottom floor is going to be open bland, and when starting with the flooring, there are many ways you can do it. This time I'm gonna keep it simple, just use some regular planks and spicing it up with some stripped planks. This way the floor doesn't look super boring, but at the same time it isn't complicated to build. Since the bottom floor is gonna be like a kitchen, we need to add some practical stuff here first. We also need some storage, so we can build a couple cabinets about the furnaces, kind of like this looking pretty good. And since the bottom floor is all open, it's kinda big and feels so empty in the middle. So to fix it, we can add some kitchen islands in the middle to fill it out some more. See, this is already so much better. We can build a simple staircase going up from here and maybe add some books below it to use up the free space we have. And that's how the bottom floor looks like when it's all done. But moving on to the second floor, this time we are gonna divide the space into three separate rooms, leaving two smaller rooms and a hallway like this. The first room will be a bedroom, so adding some nice decorations and a bed here. I also added some bookshelves so I can read and barrels to store my items. The end result looking like this. Pretty nice. But we have one more room and let's quickly do something a bit more practical with that one. And that would be the enchanting room. Luckily that is easy to build. Adding more bookshelves and just an enchanting table in the middle. Okay, to fill out the room a bit more, I'm also gonna add a couple different workbenches and chests to here as well. Decorating the hallway with smaller bits and pieces and we have ourselves a pretty nice looking second floor. And since this house is so tall, we even have the room for the third floor attic. So let's quickly do that as well. This one is gonna be pretty straightforward, adding some chests, useful workbenches and light. Nothing special, but using up all the space in your house will always look good. As I mentioned before, this house was not designed by me. Doesn't surprise you? Okay, I knew I wasn't that talented. But luckily this roughly builds let us use one of his house designs in this video. So that is the house you are seeing and if you want to see some other amazing builds, go check out this roughly builds channel. He also has a block by block tutorial on this exact house right here. I hope you learned something new and see you in the next video. Bye.